Welcome to episode 12 of the Today I Am Sober podcast with your host, Liz W. Today we're doing something different. I'm simply going to talk to you and have a chat about what to do on those days when it all feels too much and you can't find the joy. So listen in to my top tips. I'd love to know what you do to change your mood when you simply can't find the joy. You can always email me at liz at dayamsober.co.uk or you can DM me through our social media channels. Enjoy the show. Have you ever felt like you should be happy? that you're blessed in so many ways. But here's the thing, today, you simply can't find the joy. Especially at this time of year when we're supposed to be excited. Perhaps you've got time off work, time to just be. Or perhaps you're traveling up and down the country visiting family and spending Christmas with people you don't normally spend extended periods of time with. Because let's face it, Christmas is a time of celebration. But perhaps the ghost of Christmas past is coming out. And for me, this time of year is difficult. You see, it's coming up to the time of year when my dad passed away. And of course, Christmas is a time when his loss is more apparent. Because he's not sat at the Christmas dining table, looking daft, with his Christmas cracker hat on, whistling songs and getting tipsy on one glass of red wine. And of course, he's winning the obligatory game of Trivial Pursuit. But it's also the end of the year, which is a time of reflection. Particularly at the end of 2019, when, I don't know about you, but all I seem to hear are people talking about it being the end of a decade... You know, we typically look back at our goals and desires that we had at the beginning of the year. And perhaps on reflection, we didn't achieve everything we wanted to. Or perhaps you just sat on your pity pot. And I don't know about you, but sometimes I quite enjoy being sat on my pity pot. But the problem I have is that sometimes if I stay in that state too long, it can send me downwards and it becomes even harder to find the joy. So if you're struggling to find the joy at this time of year, here's some of the things that I've done over the past six years on those days when I just, I just can't find it. And it feels really elusive. This list isn't in any order. It's not in a priority. Um, I'm going to make sure um, all of the details are in the show notes. So you can very quickly look um, and find them. So you don't have to grab a pen and paper and write them down. What's the first thing you can do? Well, I love this one. The first thing is to change your state. Now, people say that and I'm like, what does that mean? Now, for me, it could be about having some really upbeat music on. And at this time of year, I love a bit of Michael Bublé. Can't beat a bit of Michael Bublé singing a Christmas song. Or my favourite Christmas song is actually The Fairy Tale of New York with the Pogues. So I put that on really loudly. Or perhaps... I pull out one of my favourite films, and I've got several, but at this time of year, Love Actually is simply delightful. In fact, every time I go to an arrivals hall at an airport, I'm always people watching and, and looking for the joy. But see what, you know, figure out what works for you to change your state. So is it moving? Is it doing a happy dance? Is it... Sitting down and getting cosy, putting some candles on, put, getting a nice cosy blanket and watching a film that just makes your heart sing. 
try it. See what you can do to change your state. The second thing is gratitude. Grab a piece of paper and a pen. If not, if you've got a mobile phone, open up the notes section and write a list of the things that you're grateful for. Try 10. Try 20. See how many you can write down. I know for me, when I struggle to write the list of 10, and I I try and write a list of 10, if I can't get to 10 really easily, and the first one is, I'm always grateful for the fact that today I'm sober. If I can't find nine more, I know I'm not quite right. So it's a really good barometer for me of how I'm how I'm feeling and what state I'm in. And my first sponsor said to me, write your list. And if you write it at night time, reread it in the morning. Now, I don't know about you, but in eight hours of sleep, sometimes nine, sometimes seven, but I can go to bed in one mood and wake up in a completely different mood. So rereading what I wrote the night before for me is really helpful. But perhaps you write yours in the morning, your gratitude list. And if you do write one in the morning, read it at night time just before you go to bed. Remind yourself of all of those things you're grateful for. I remember in the in the first year of my recovery, I had a gratitude book and I wrote down every single day religiously 10 things I was grateful for. And on those days when I was really struggling to find any gratitude and life just felt really hard, recovery felt really hard, I would look back a month earlier and I would see what I was grateful for a month ago. I would also write a few little notes about what happened during the day. Um, And I would look back and see how far I'd come and how, you know, maybe a month ago I felt great, everything was amazing. Or perhaps I felt really quite glum or I was somewhere in the middle. It doesn't matter, but actually having a record of your gratitude list is a really good way for you to kind of sense check where you are today. So that's number two, write a gratitude list. Number three, how about calling someone else and asking how they're doing? So here's the thing with me. I can sometimes get on my little pity, self-pity pot and feel very sorry for myself and think, oh my God, my life is terrible. But if you, what I've learned is when I take the focus away from me and how I'm feeling and what's going on with me, because let's face it, I am selfish and self-centered to the core. Taking it away from me and asking how someone else is and actually taking the time to call them can also help. I remember one day in relatively early sobriety, certainly within my first year, I was having a really bad Sunday. It was the summer, the sun was shining, it was a beautiful blue sky day and I just wasn't feeling it. I just felt like, oh God, it's, it's, my life is hideous, it's just atrocious. And my sponsor had said to me that I needed to call two people a day and actually speak to them. And it it got to about three o'clock and I hadn't spoken to anybody. In fact, I hadn't called anybody. And I was just feeling glimmer and glimmer and glimmer. And And I remembered, right, call two people. And I called the first person, no answer. Second person, no answer. Third person, no answer. But I left messages for each person that I called saying, hi, it's Liz, hope you're well. Just thought I'd phone and check in, see how you're doing today. And it got to my 13th call until someone actually answered. And guess what? By the time that person answered, I'd completely forgotten about me and my problems and how sorry I was feeling for myself. And I was just so grateful to speak to somebody. Um, And we had a really lovely chat. 
Then, of course, the rest of the afternoon was just full of people calling me back and it, it felt like I was on the BT exchange, just answering loads and loads of calls. But it was, it was amazing because the thing with self-pity is, I don't know about you, but it feels really lonely. And actually speaking to someone else and asking how they are, shift it was another way to shift my state and take the focus off me and put it onto somebody else. So that's my third tip. Call someone else else and simply ask how they're doing. Number four, find a friend and it doesn't have to be in person. You don't have to arrange to see them, but tell them, tell them how you're really feeling. And I did that this week. Um, I phoned a girlfriend up and I was just having a really awful day. Nothing had happened. Everything was the same as it normally is. But I just felt awful. My inner critic was having an absolute feel day. It was telling me that I wasn't good enough, that I'm rubbish, I'm not pretty enough, I'm not thin enough. You know, it was having a really lovely time beating me up, my inner critic. And I called a friend um, and I told her, how I was feeling and I shared some of this with her and I didn't actually get to speak to her we did it over a a walkie talkie app called Voxer so I left her a message and she responded and she do you know what she did the most beautiful thing she didn't say there there Liz it's gonna be okay or oh that's awful I can't believe your head's telling you that today Um, or anything like that at all. Do you know what she did? And she's not in recovery. Um, she, She can drink like a normal person. She shared with me some of her experiences and what was going on for her. And I just felt really supported. So find someone and tell them how you're feeling. I know in the in the third tip I said call someone else and ask about them but it's also really important that you you literally phone a friend and and share what's going on with you and it reminds me of one of my favorite films Pretty Woman I love that scene in the bath where Vivian is has got Edward between her legs it sounds really rude but you know what I mean And they're in the bath and she says to him, she wraps her legs around him and says, you've got 44 inches of therapy wrapped around you for the bargain price of $3,000. And she slaps his chest. I felt supported and I felt loved because she was marching next to me and she didn't she didn't let me go down the rabbit hole of oh poor you darling because honestly the last thing i need when i'm on my pity pot and i'm feeling really sorry for myself and my inner critic is having a field day and the negative committee in my head are just going bonkers is for someone else to say to me oh dear lizzie that's awful that doesn't work for me Number five, pray. Sounds really simple, doesn't it? But the thing I love about the God of my understanding is that he's always there. He's always with me. And at any moment of any day, I can ask for help and guidance and support and love. And just having that conversation helps me. Because again, like calling someone else or talking to a friend or, you know, listening to some fab music or watching a film, it changes my state. And do you know what? I've had some, I've had some remarkable God incidences. Some people call them coincidences. I call them God incidences. Where I've asked for support and guidance and I've got it in the most 
unusual ways. Prayer is really powerful. And if you don't pray today, just give it a bash. You don't have to call it God. You don't have to call it him, her, it. I know someone who has a higher power. And for them, it's the universe. It's the sky. It's it's all around them. And they feel connected to their higher power through nature. So it doesn't matter who or what you pray to. Just give it a go and see if it works for you. Oh, always works for me. Um, and if in doubt, I use the serenity prayer. If I can't find the words to have that conversation because I just feel socially awkward and even praying feels really hard, I simply say the serenity prayer. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Such a simple prayer and so beautiful. Number six. Now for me, Christmas is a time when my dad's not sat at the dining table. But the thing I've learned is I have a choice and I have a choice to be sad that he's not there. I have a choice to celebrate the man that he was and the life that he led and the things that I learned from him. So I celebrate him today. I go visit him at his grave, I light a candle, or I just simply talk to him. So if there's someone that you're grieving the loss of this year, perhaps it's even the loss of a relationship, perhaps they're still on this earth, but you don't have that connection with them, celebrate them and thank them for the time that they were in your life. I believe that people are in our lives for a reason, a season. And what's the third one? What is it? A reason, a season. I can't remember the third one. If you remember what the third one is, please um, send me a DM on Instagram or something um, and, and tell me what it is. I've co- it's completely escaped me at the moment. But celebrate that love. Number seven. And I'd love to say this this is this is my wisdom. It, it is absolutely not my wisdom. But it's, it's what my first sponsor said to me. Whenever I got into a pickle, she would always say to me, Liz, keep your head and your hands in the same place. Really simple advice. And boy, does it work. You see, I don't know about you, but my head can be quite fantastical at times. It can go off and imagine all sorts of scenarios and catastrophize. And on those days when I simply can't find the joy, my illness loves it and it just goes completely bonkers. I've talked about the negative committee and the inner critic. Oh, how's the feel day? And in those moments, I just have to remember to keep my head and my hands in the same place, i.e. where I am right now. And then number eight. Now, if you work a 12-step program, we are so blessed, you know. We have a step for personal inventory. Now, my sponsor said to me, Liz, you only do step 10 when you've done one through nine. And if you haven't done steps one through nine, please don't do step 10. But if you are at step 10, or you're working a 12-step program and you've done the first nine, perhaps you need to take some personal inventory. Now, for me, one of the things when I can't find joy is I've learned that sometimes there's simmering resentments and they may be so, so tiny that I haven't really picked them up 
So that's a time for me to sit down again with pen and paper because it just, I don't know what it is about the action of writing, but it really helps me actually get out what's inside of me. So taking personal inventory and looking at those resentments, looking at those fears, looking at, have I been dishonest? Helps me enormously. Because I I heard in a in a meeting once, it's not the great big rocks that trip you up, it's the pebbles in your shoes. And for me, those little resentments that seem so inconsequential are the ones that trip me up. Because let's face it, the big stuff's easy to spot. You know, if there's something big going on, really easy for me to spot um, and deal with it through inventory. So those are eight of the things that I've done and do to try and change my state and change how I'm feeling. So listening to music, watching a film, writing a gratitude list, calling someone else and asking how they are, chatting to a friend, praying, celebrating the people around me and those that aren't here and being grateful for them. Keeping my head and my hands in the same place, reminding myself that it's just about today. It's not about yesterday. It's not about tomorrow. It's just about today. And then finally, taking that personal inventory. Now, I'm sure there's other things that we could do. And I'd love to know what you do to get yourself out of that that kind of situation where you just can't feel the joy. Now, at this time of year, it would be really remiss of me not to address the fact that you might be worrying about the days ahead. Let's face it, you know, this is the season of Christmas parties. You know, I don't know about you, but my Christmas parties, everyone got slaughtered and usually I was in the centre of it. Or I know, you know, the the booze is going to be flowing on Christmas Day. So irrespective of whether you've got Christmas parties or um, you know that there's going to be drink around on Christmas Day. What I do in those situations is, is I have a plan. And it's really simple. I have to plan for staying connected with me. So just because it's Christmas Day doesn't mean to say I don't focus on the fact that today I'm sober. Doesn't mean I can't speak to other people that aren't in the same house as me or my family members. So I actually call people in recovery. And let's face it, I need a plan for if everyone else is drinking and quite honestly their drunkenness becomes super boring I need an escape plan. So what is my escape plan? You know, I I tell my family if I need to escape, I'm going to just go. And in my in my first Christmas, my family were, were phenomenal actually. I went to a I went to a a meeting on Christmas day. And I'd already told them that if I needed to go, I was just going to go. And it got to seven o'clock at night and I said, look, I'm going to the meeting. And no one said, oh, but you can't leave now. Come on, we're about to play Trivial Pursuit or whatever. They just said, okay, we'll see you later. Because I'd prepared them. I'd got that plan in place. So get a plan if you're worried about, you know, drink in the coming days. But what if, what if you've tried the things that I've suggested or you've got your own techniques for kind of shifting shifting your state and you still feel like you're under a real cloud despite everything that you're doing you know you're working you're working your program of recovery you're talking to people perhaps you're going to meetings you're praying you're meditating you just can't shift the globe 
please, please, please don't discount the fact that if this has been going on for a while, it might not be you feeling down in the dumps, but perhaps it's depression. But please, for the love of God, don't self-diagnose yourself. Don't let me diagnose you. Don't let anyone else diagnose you unless they are a doctor and they're medically tra- medically trained. So get that medical opinion. There's absolutely no shame in needing medical help to improve your mental health. It doesn't mean your programme of recovery isn't working. Please get help if this has been going on for more time than you can remember. Now, I met a fantastic psychiatrist. He's called Dr. Tim Cantifer. And he has saved my life on many occasions, but the three occasions in particular. In 2000, when I first met him for depression. In 2007, when I met him again, depressed. And in 2013, when I met him, depressed. And also admitted I had an alcohol problem. Now, he's sadly, he's retired, but he has written the most awesome book. It's called Depressive Illness, The Curse of the Strong. And you can buy it from Amazon. And I love this book because when I was in the pit of depression, I was trying to read it. And I found find reading and taking things in really quite difficult when I'm depressed. But he's, he's, he said this to me and it, it sticks with me and I know it's in his book because I've since since read it and actually absorbed it. And he says, if you feel like you're, you're hoovering and you just need to leave the hoover, you need to just stop hoovering and leave it if you're tired, if you can't do it anymore. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm not the kind of woman that when she starts hoovering, stops I don't do that. I don't leave the hoover in the middle of the route. But what he says in your book is if it's too much, you need to stop and you just need to leave the the hoover in the middle of the room. And if you feel like that, if you feel that there hasn't been enough joy for too many days, please go and get some help. It doesn't mean you're not working a good programme. It doesn't mean that you're a bad person. It just means your limbic system's a bit screwed up. And Dr. Cantifer talks about that in his book, all about the, the limbic system in your brain and how how it goes a bit out of kilter when you've got depression. So listen, I I really hope this has been useful. You know, Christmas is a time of joy, but sometimes it's hard to feel joyful even on those sunny, beautiful, blue sky days or on those dark, wintry days when it's cold and it's wet and it's dark at four o'clock in the afternoon. Ugh, I can't bear this time of year from a weather perspective. So try to change your state. And you know what? If you're struggling... Today, tomorrow, when you listen to this, perhaps you pick this up over the Christmas period. Send me an email, liz at todayiamsober.co.uk. Someone wise once said to me, there's always someone willing to listen. And I'm willing to listen to you too. So please... If you want to, if you want some help, if you want to talk to someone who doesn't know you, who's not going to judge you, by all means, please reach out to me. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you have a marvellous Christmas. And if this episode has been helpful, please let me know. Otherwise, I just feel like I'm talking to myself. Take care of you. Bye for now.
thanks for listening to this episode of the Today I Am Sober podcast. I hope you enjoyed it. I'd love your feedback. So come and find me on social media. All of the links are in the show notes. Until next time. Bye.